I have emerged often in life. The first time being birth. I emerged forth from the womb to show the world my worth. From baby to toddler, to school age to middle school, emerging on every step without ever knowing. To teenager to early 20s, and life finally began. So uh, what's your name? My name is Annette. Hi, Annette. I'm, I'm Reginald. I was reading this article here, and it was saying that over 8,000 people in the Twin City area become homeless every day. Well, that's something that I recently learned as well. I'm in a company called Zamnia Theater Project. And in this, we work with homeless. And actually, the troop consists of those that have been homeless and those that have not been homeless. And your name is? My name is Marcia Barnes. The one thing I like about uh, what I do uh, with the Zamnia Theater is that it exposes those kind of things. It exposes to people who, like you may not have thought about, that did you realize that the person that you see, not only are they experiencing not having a shelter, but they have health issues. They have diabetes, you know. They have mental health issues, abandonment issues. They're just like you and me. They just don't have a place to live. What is your definition of homelessness? My definition of homelessness is when your name is not on the lease. It's as simple as that. Uh, there is different basis to being homeless, but primarily, if your name is not on the lease, if you're not a guarantor where you are responsible for the payment of that particular unit, if you are living with someone, but your name is not legally on the lease, you are really homeless. Some looks better than other. Homeless is a wide, wide, you know, it's just a lot of faces to it. But basically, yeah, that is the definition of homelessness. A person who has not secured his own residence in their own name. There are a lot of homeless people that are well educated. And this is what people have to understand, that that is not an intention that you choose to be. Yet, even though we know like here in Minnesota, look at how they are raising these rents. And so when you go and you're looking to rent a place and say you have a big family, but your income does not match that. And a lot of spaces here say you have to make two or three times more than um, more of the income. Yeah, that's yeah. And so what really are we supposed to do? Because sometimes you don't qualify for any of the government help and you're still trying to make it. There are two things uh, I'd like to say about the narrative and how people come across uh, what homeless is. First of all, 77%, I, I must say, 77% of homeless people have had multiple homelessness throughout their lives. 17% are children. So can you imagine a child, you know, uh, eight or nine years old? You know, what breaks my heart sometimes is that some children have never had a place, a steady place to live, which means they're gonna have a very poor education. They're gonna have a very poor uh, diet. Okay, that's one thing. And 77% of um, homeless people have had a history of homelessness. So that is true. But on the other side, this, oh, well, they just uh, started drinking. What, if you, what would you do if you were in pain? People use because they're in pain. What would you do if uh, you had nowhere to go, if you had no face, but someone says, okay, here's some, um, you know, here's some Xanax or here's some, you know, something that'll make you feel better because they're right there with you. What would you do? What would you do if systemic racism uh, hikes the rent on you? You know, they see you coming, but they hike the rent and it's just a little more than you can afford. What would you do if you were in between? And many of us 
many of us are in between jobs. You know, uh, one paycheck away from hitting the streets ourselves. These are very real life things that happen to real people who didn't ask to be treated that way. It's like any other topic of societal discrimination and systemic racism. It affects housing, education, healthcare, and the like. And they did not create these things. Many of these things were created. There are people who have a job and sleep in their car. I would like to share that I have been homeless more than once. My most recent experience with homelessness was in 2014. I would say it was a learning lesson and it's as if I went from having everything to having nothing. So I was working and I was injured and from that point it changed my whole life. My experience is I would say they've given me more lessons than regrets. Sometimes you don't know how strong you are until you are in certain situations. Or sometimes you hear people saying that you are so strong or we're superwomen. And no, I don't want to be a superwoman. Yes, I think there are times when strength is needed. Yet, I don't always want to be strong either. Because I feel like so much in society is, um, it makes you kind of shameful to show or to even go through things. So things are covered up like a Band-Aid. Like people would be like, well, I'm happy. And there was a time when I didn't deal with the dark sides of me. And when you learn to deal with the darker sides, it's healing. Motherhood at 17, emerging all the way. Not knowing much about myself with another life this way. Married life at 19, emerging more each day. I still had no clue whom I was, for life had truly begun. Tossed here and tossed there, something different every day. For who am I? Will I really ever know? Baby two, then three and four, our family continued to grow. So much in between, so much I needed to know. No going back, just push ahead to be stuck in a whirlwind. Now five and six is really thick. I'm drowning deep within. Emerging forth, yes, I will again. Emerging on so many roads of life, I sit and think, will I ever get it? Will I ever get it right? Fast forward to today, as I have emerged from a journey that has given me more than I've expected. I'm emerging forth were all the wonderful experiences of life I have collected as I step forward from today, emerging to the unexpected, still emerging.